we do have some opposition in the state to forest management. We have some differences of agreement about how a tree best fights climate change. There's always been, I think, a, you know, a general group that just doesn't like forestry. There's a misconception that we come in and we clear cut and we walk away and we don't care. This harvest, the day after it was done, there's nothing pretty about it. Debris everywhere, exposed soil, but we don't do this for the brown stage, we do it for the green stage. Many people find it a simple message to be like, oh yeah, cutting trees is bad, whereas it's just more uh, nuanced than that simple sentiment. They've been fed this narrative that we're clear cutting 2,500 acres or that we're you know, just degrading these huge areas of forest and that we're all just like timber industry in interests and it's just totally not true. I credit everybody with earnestness about loving Vermont and wanting the best for it. What I struggle with a little bit more is when this work becomes, you know, a rejection of the overwhelming science that we have, that forest management can be incredibly positive for ecosystems. Unless this industry, the working lands, the farms and the, and the uh, forests are accepted, valued and supported, we will be gone. I'd like the people to remember that they like to go to the country for their hike, for their walk, to walk their dog, to walk in the forest. The maple syrup that they enjoy, the lumber that they use in their house, all come from rural Vermont. Absolutely, wildlife is at risk. Water quality is at risk. Air quality is at risk. Biodiversity is at risk. People suggest that we're all just a bunch of people who don't care about forests, when I know that exactly the opposite is the case, and that we're approaching all of this work from a place of caring about forests so deeply that we're willing to do these incredibly challenging and bittersweet things to make them healthy. This intersection in time where our work has been called into question is a great opportunity for us to say, are we doing this the best we can? I'm so excited for the outcomes of the Forest Future Strategic Roadmap. It's going to be, I, I think, transformational for the future of the forest economy. We have a 22-member advisory panel that has been meeting since last October. So manage for increased forest health, promote land use policies to maintain working forest lands. That strategic roadmap is, is planning out our next 10 years. We've had these kind of 10 year plans for agriculture for Vermont for a long time because it helps the legislature guide its investments in the areas that will have the biggest impact. And what are those key drivers that can be shifting where we're at 10 years from now and how do we intentionally steer it to the direction we want to? The state of Vermont's soils and weather are elegantly suited for growing high quality, healthy, diverse timber all over the state. The proof is everywhere you look. About 80% of the forested area in Vermont is owned by individual landowners. And that's really a you know, global anomaly to have this much undeveloped land that's nearly entirely privately owned. But it wasn't until I went out to Washington State and Oregon and lived out there and saw 100,000 acre clear cuts. You know, I was out west in Lumber Street for a long time and I've talked to a lot of people out there 50 years ago there was no sense of responsibility to it at all. So if you come back east and look at forest management where it's family forest owners, smaller lots, much more diverse forests, New Zealand is a place where they have bifurcated their forest. They want to start having what you know we have here, forests that are intact, that are sustainably managed. They're actually looking to New England for that. Globally, we do some of the best forestry. I was in this stand in 2006. This is my second time here, and I don't, I probably will be back before the end of my career. And this is all part of a long range management plan. We're not only enhancing the habitat, we're improving the health of the trees that are here, protecting the natural resource features, the streams, the wetlands, the vernal pools, and we're also simultaneously sending raw materials into the supply chain and we're putting revenue back to the forest landowner. I consider that to be a direct conservation effect. In Vermont, they're licensed foresters, and that means that these are people who really understand what they're doing. And I, I have not come across any foresters in our state who don't want the best long-term solutions for 
our forests and our communities. You could see, you know, this tree right here, that's a balsam fir that's uh, broken and tipped over. So we're trying to capture that mortality before it happens. I've developed over time an immense respect for foresters, not simply because they spend a lot of their time looking up, seeing how healthy the crowns of the trees are, but they think 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 years out in terms of what am I doing today to get good product out of the, out of the property, but what also is going to grow here? That balsam has a not a very good crown and it's kind of shading in that maple behind it and all this region in here, so it's a great candidate to remove. We're harvesting sustainably so we can go harvest and then 35 or 45 or 80 years, we can go on to another portion of that same property and harvest more timber. Our 100 plus miles of trails are made possible by 105 private landowners. They are actively managing that land, but they have signage. Like, this was, this was cut. You know, if you want to ride your mountain bike here, this is how these people pay for this land that you're so privileged to ride your mountain bike on. We put up educational signs. This is what a timber harvest looks like. And this is why it's beneficial to the forest. And if someone from Boston visiting one weekend to Kingdom Trail sees that sign and has a better understanding of the jobs that are supported through that timber harvest, of the healthier forest, of the new trail that emerged, then that's a win in my eyes. If everyone who went for a hike in Vermont and really understood as they were hiking that they're hiking through private property, knew that there was a forester there working with the logger to make sure that the harvesting was sustainable with minimal impact, understood that kind of that timber was going into being carbon storage in the form of a home for a person and that the forest is growing back. You're seeing like miles and miles and miles of forest that exists on this landscape because of the forest products industry, then I wonder if we might have different policies. We need to change the narrative. The work that we're doing really is doing ecosystem restoration at scale while producing local renewable resources. And we need to celebrate that. I came up here and just fell in love with the area when I see friends uh, traveling back down south and I get to stay here. No one has ever been told, not just that forest management is okay or that it's acceptable, but that it's beautiful and that it's vital. This is amazing. Timber harvesting is sustainable in Vermont. And if we value those forests, we need to value the whole system, the whole forest economy that supports them. It's critical that our voters understand what's going on around them in rural Vermont. A lot of times, the narrative that seems like it makes the most sense when you hear it is not going to be the one that's true. We're not going to let our communities be ignored anymore. We're going to advocate for what we need. We're going to tell our stories and we're going to um, you know, be a part of figuring out how to make a Vermont that works for everybody. Can you imagine a local renewable resource that contributes positively to our local economies and our working landscape, and that can be harvested while we help an ecosystem heal. And what could be better than that?